So I just search for the niche or industry that I want. And the system scans meta ads, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube Shorts, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Reddit to find hundreds of content ideas and narrows them down to what's actually performing, giving you or your client the most comprehensive view of your industry, see how your competitors are posting or promoting, and allow you to get insight on what works, all on autopilot. And by the end of this video, you'll learn how the system was built as well. Let's get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I spent a decade in creative and marketing work and half a decade leading data teams and now founded our AI solutions group and Robo Nuggets, our education arm, where we have several hundred members, all AI practitioners across the globe. And here, our mission is to make creating with AI easy to learn regardless what your background is, with a wealth of lessons that most people join for, but most members stay because of the community that we have built. All right, before we dive in, I think it's good to just understand why this type of system is useful and important. And at the core of it, it boils down to this fact Act, which is that information is an asset. So if you have this system that gives you relevant information about your industry, then you get insight on what works and what doesn't work, including what your competitors are doing and what type of content or adverts work best for your space. You can also use information as a lead magnet. So for example, if your audience are chiropractors, how many of them would sign up to your mailing list if you give them a view of the top content that other chiros are doing? And last is that you can use it for cold outreach, which is basically reaching out to people you don't know to make a connection. So if you provide them information that's valuable to them and relevant to them, then you're able to provide value outright, which makes that connection more likely to happen. And if you have information automatically delivered to you using tools like N8N, then not only can you be informed of what works in your space, but you can also build it as part of your content creation workflow to automatically adapt content based on what works, which we'll talk more about near the end. And by the way, this system, we built it in N8N, which if you're new, N8N is a no-code automation tool similar to Zapier or Make.com. And what's great about N8N is if you have this template, which you can just download here if you're part of the community, you can just import that into to N8N and that will build the system for you automatically. So that is a good shortcut, but don't worry because I'll be going through how to build this system as well so that you can follow along and learn how to build it too. And before we head into the system itself, first we need to learn what Appify is and how to use it. And if you're new, Appify is basically one of the most reliable services out there for scraping and extracting information from several sources. So if you go to their website, you can see they have scrapers for TikTok, Google Maps, Instagram, and 7,000 plus other actors is what they call them to let you gather information from the web and organize it for your use case. And we have been using Appify for our work a lot and they've also done some masterclasses with the community before. And they also have a free plan so that you can test it out before committing. And if you're part of the community, we're also able to work with Appify to get 100 USD vouchers for 100 of our members. So check that out here if you need it. But if we head to the console once you sign up, just to show you how it all works, first you need to head to the Appify store. And usually how we find scrapers here is literally just searching for it. So if you search for TikTok, you'll find a lot of scrapers here with also an indication of how many users there are. So as a general rule, if there are more users, the more trusted the scraper is. So if we click on this one, which we've used before, that now takes you to the page that lets you try out this scraper. And the way you use it is here in the input tab. If you scroll down, you'll basically find fields here that you can fill in similar to a Google form. So for example, if we want 50 videos for this run, then we do that here. And if you unfurl each of these, these are actually custom or different depending on the scraper that you are using. So if you're new, it can get quite confusing. And so part of the value of this system is that it makes accessing these Appify scrapers much easier without you having to go through each of the documentation pieces for each one of them. But just to show you how it works, for example, if we ask for 10 videos for this search query, what we can do here in Appify directly is just click start. And what that will do is get our data for us. And if you click on runs, you'll be able to find your data here. So if we click on that, we now have these videos as well as the information cleanly organized for us, which we can export. So that's the basics of how you use Appify. But the question becomes, how do we use it in an automation like N8N? Well, if you head to N8N and add a node, Appify actually has a custom node now available in the latest N8N version. And the specific action you most likely would be using is this run an actor and get the data set. So if we click on that, you'll now have this node, which we can test out. And if we configure it, first thing you need is to set up your connection or credential, which you can do here by creating a new credential. And if you click connect my account, that will take you to a single sign-on page for Appify itself, making it seamless. And if, for example, we want to use this scraper within N8N, all we need to do is to find it from their list. And if you search the name here, you'll be able to select it. And now the final configuration you need here is this input JSON or JavaScript object notation. And so the way you get this is if you go back to the input tab in Appify, if you have your search parameters here filled in, what you can now do is just switch to this JSON view. And that will actually give you this structure, which you can just copy and which you can paste 
paste here. So if we take a closer look at it, you'll see that we have our search query here, as well as the intended results that we want for this run. So that's everything you need, basically. So if we execute this step, what it will do is run Appify in the background, which if you go to runs, you'll actually be able to see it here. And it will say the origin is N8N. And when that finished processing, it will now give you those 10 items that it was able to scrape, which if you switch to the table view, you'll be able to preview here as well. And so when setting up this system, that's what we did for TikTok and is generally the same process that we follow to set up these other social platforms as well. But obviously from this automation, you can see that that is not the only node that we have. And so the next thing to teach is how each of these rows are set up. So if we take one example so that we can go through it better, you'll see it just starts with this form where you can fill in what you want to search for, how many items you want to scrape, and which platforms you want to source the information from. And at the end of it, we just load all of our output in this Google Sheet that we also formatted so that you know which particular content pieces work best and which do not. So just to show you how that stream is built, we just added a first step here for the trigger using this form node. And when you set it up, it's similar to how you would set up a Google form where you can just declare a title, a description, as well as the questions here. So if I add a form element, we can have this set as search for and have it as required. So now if we execute this step, what will happen is it will open a new window for us that contains that question. And so if we improve that form some more, we can get something like this, where we also ask how many items we want to scrape, as well as this field for checkboxes for you to indicate what platforms you are interested in. And what's great about N8N here is that they actually provide you with this unique URL that you can bookmark or send to your clients whenever you need to use this system. And also, if you want to customize the look of it, if you scroll down, you can just click Add Option here and look for Custom Form Styling. It will give you this default styling. So what you can do there is to just copy that into ChatGPT and have it customize the look for you so that you can paste it back here. But so that we can continue building this out, what I'll do is when this form node is running, I'll just fill up this form and select TikTok for now and click submit. And what that will do if we go back to any end is just load the response here in the output. And so the next node that we had, if you remember, is going to be this filter node. And the purpose of this is just to check if the user selected TikTok as a platform. So to set up that condition, what you want is to drag this parent which platforms field in here change that to contains and just type here the platform that you are setting up, which is TikTok in this case. However, you can see that there is an error, which if we expand this, it's mainly because right now this data type is an object, which at least for this purpose of the filter node, it's having trouble to recognize. So if you change this expression into this one where we are stringifying it, basically converting it into plain text, then we get this result, which if we go back, that now sort of flattens this data field so that this filter node can check if it contains TikTok or not. So if we execute that step, you'll see that since the user selected TikTok in the form, this has now been kept and we can move on to the succeeding node, which is going to be the Appify node that we set up earlier. So if we connect that, if I open this, this is the same as what we saw before, but you'll see here in the JSON, if we expand it, the difference now is that we have these green values, which are dynamic values. So they change depending on what was submitted in the form. So the results per page is being mapped to this 10 value that the user submitted earlier, and the search query is being mapped to this field that was also answered in the form. And obviously there are other parameters which you can tweak depending on your use case and which you can review in the Appify Actors page. But at least for general use cases, this would work for us. So if we execute this step, and once that completes, you'll find that we get a similar result as earlier. But if you just scroll down here, you can see that part of the problem is that there's too much data that it is giving us, which is good for some cases, but at least for our use, we do need to pick out the data points that are relevant for us here. So if we just add a step here for an edit fields node, what you can do now is to pick out the data points that you want from the left side here. So for example, this text is the caption, so we just drag it here. And we also have this posted date that we can also drag. And if we just execute this step to show how it works, what it will simply do is summarize those fields for us so that they are easier to read. And so what I did is to just capture the caption, the date posted, the username of who posted it, the URL of the video itself, and a couple of other metrics that are generally relevant if you're trying to understand which content is performing well on TikTok. So if we execute this step, we now have those 10 videos with the relevant information summarize for us. And so the final step is to just load these 10 items into a logging mechanism, which the one we use is Google Sheets because it is much easier to set up. And the action you want here is this append row in sheet function, which if you haven't set up Google Sheets before, you can just create a new credential here and sign in with Google. But once that's connected, you can just find the template that you need here, which in our case would be this one. And if you need a copy of that and you're part of the community, you can just click on this link and you'll be able to make a copy of it. And here you can see it's a 
a simple template where we just have tabs for each and every one of those social media platforms, as well as the parameters or columns that we are looking for. So if I just link this to the TikTok tab, you can change this to map automatically. And now if we execute this step, what it will do is load all of that data that we extracted into our Google Sheet. So now you have information on all of these videos. And what you can also do is add a column for metrics that you want to track and check. So for example, we have this likes per day column, where basically we're just checking how many likes on average this video has gotten over the duration since it has been posted. And if we just drag that down, you'll be able to get an indication of which TikTok content is working or has worked in the past. So this one, for example, is a clear outlier where it's gotten 14.7 million likes over its lifetime and 150 million views. But there, that is how this automation works in full. And so coming from that, what we basically did is integrate the best Appify actors for each of these platforms into this one automation, which I'll now show one by one so that you can understand the information that they provide as well. So we'll save meta ads for the end because that's actually slightly different. We've already done TikTok just now. And so for Instagram, this is the one we used. And if you give it a search term, it will give you the posts as well as good information around how many likes, shares, comments, and views it has if it's a reel, which we use in this engagement per day column just to measure which ones are performing well and not. For YT, this is what we recommend. So if you want to understand which long-form content works best for this platform, for example, then it gives you the likes, views, and comments here, which you can now look at to get insights on what videos work best. And then for shorts, it's pretty much the same. It's the same scraper as well. The only difference is that we are filtering for shorts instead of longs in this case. Now, if your content is relevant for LinkedIn, this is the scraper that we recommend. And similar to the others, it will give you information on the content, plus also some of the engagement metrics that you can measure. Then of course, for X, this is what we've used before and which we also featured in this channel previously. And that will give you the tweet itself and like always the engagement metrics that you can measure. And then finally for Reddit, I use this Reddit scraper light. And Reddit's pretty interesting because you can use this system to also check for mentions of your brand, for example, so that you have information on where it's posted and what the sentiment is for your specific product. And finally, for meta ads, this is the scraper that's most trusted. And it does give you a lot of information around the product, who's running it, when these ads are running. But when it comes to ads, the metrics that you ideally would want is the ROAS for these adverts. That's sort of like the gold standard. But obviously, meta doesn't disclose that. And so the scraper cannot get that from competitors as well. So if you're using this to get inspiration on what ads you need to launch, usually the alternate metric to check can be how many days this specific advert has been on air. Because if it's been running for a while, then that is a good indication that that advert is working for this competitor. So that is quite useful, especially since Black Friday is coming up. And if you need a view of the costs, you can see them summarized here, where the price for each item is less than one cent for each one. And we actually did some research to make sure that the actors we use all have reasonable costs because there are some actors over at Appify that charge something like 39 USD per month, which I encourage you to avoid if there are alternatives like the ones we featured in this video. And that in full is how the system works. So if you want to grab this template as well as all the resources we talked about here, you can check out the Robo Nuggets community just in the link below where we have tons more lessons on AI and automation here in the classroom and where we have actually started to send out the training certifications to our members who are finishing the classroom course. So that's pretty cool to see and it's quite useful if you're using it for CV or resume purposes. And by the way, for members who are on the annual plan, you also get access to this deals platform where we partnered with 570 plus AI and SaaS tools that equate up to $3 million in savings if you use all of them. So that's just some of the perks that you get if you are part of the community. So if that's something that you're after, then check us out to see if this is for you. And in case you haven't subscribed yet to this platform, then consider doing so because it helps us a lot to put out more educational content like this. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.